hello. Thank you very much for joining the Vision Network by Women Mayors today. I'd like to now start our active participation, A Women Will Change the Shape of This Country, a breakout session number four. My name is Tomoko Omura and will be the facilitator for this breakout session. I'm very pleased to be here. Before we start a discussion, I would like to introduce a certain index to you. At the World Economic Forum this year, August, they announced the Gender Gap Index, which is called the Gender Equality Ranking this year for 2022, and Japan ranked 116th out of 146 countries, which was the lowest among developed nations. When looking at the details in the areas of education and health, we did mark full scores. However, female involvement in the field of politics is extremely low, and just within the area of politics, we ranked 139th out of the 1,724 municipalities in Japan, female chiefs that we have here with us today, we only have 43 female chiefs. And therefore, in politics and government, so that women can be more active and in building a society in Japan for the next generation, we will today have the female ambassadors joining us today to talk about their initiatives in their respective countries, and we will hear first-hand experience from these women who are at the forefront of politics so that we can think together on this topic. First, I would like to introduce the female ambassadors to Japan joining our panel today. From Serbia, we have Her Ex Excellency Ms. Alexandra Kovac, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Public of Serbia to Jer uh, Japan. She is fluent in uh, Japanese as well, actually. And Her Excellency Mrs. Genevieve Edna Apalu, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Ghana to Japan, who has 24 years of experience as a career diplomat. Uh, she e was inaugurated as ambassador from this year, January. She is fluent in French and Spanish. And from Nicaragua, we have Her Excellency Ms. Sandy Annabel Davila Sandoval, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Nicaragua, who just joined as ambassador as of last week, Thursday. Thank you very much for joining us today. We also have the Japanese female leaders with us as well. And first, from the Suginami Ward in Tokyo, Mayor Satoko Kishimoto. And she has been involved in environmental movements since her university days, and she has lived in Holland and Belgium. And she is the Suginami Ward since this year summer with a population of 560,000 people. And we also have Mayor Sawako Naito from the city of Tokushima, Tokushima Prefecture. She is the youngest female city mayor. And she is still in her 30s, I believe, 38. She is very young and a rising star. We also have members joining us online as well. From Tochigi Prefecture, Nasukarasiyama uh, City, Mayor Junko Kawamata, who is the same age as myself. I'm very happy to hear that. And she was previously a dentist. She has been a politician for 12 years and a city mayor for five years. And the city's catchphrase is enjoying Nasukarasuyama through your five senses. And then also from Tochigi Prefecture, from uh, Shimotsuga Nogi Town, uh, Mayor Hiroko Mase. Uh, she has been a female uh, chief, uh, first in the prefecture of Tochigi since 2008. And she is in her fourth term. She's a highly seasoned leader. She's also an artist. Uh, from Kochi Prefecture, Agawa District, Ino Town, Mayor Makiko Ikeda. Since losing her husband to brain tumor at the age of 42, she has been active in the field of politics. And in her local town of Kochi, active women are called Hachikin in her local dialect. And she is a Hachikin for sure. And the male chiefs around her call her big sis with much affection. This is a 45-minute session, so we'd like to get started. And then first, our theme is 
the results of women's empowerment in politics in different countries. With many countries currently starting implementation of the quota system, as well as other institutional reforms in the area of politics and government, uh, this has been conducive in encouraging women's active participation. And out of the developed nations, uh, more than 40% have been implementing the quota system. But now I would like to ask the ambassadors to Japan, in your respective countries, how have you been working on women's empowerment initiatives? And what have been the challenges for you to move forward with the reforms, as well as uh, what were the successes and the drivers for reforming? So first of all, I'd like to invite Ambassador Kovacu from Serbia, Balkan Peninsula, Southeast and countries. The Serbian is uh, the 23rd in the Gender Equality mm. Index. Well, dear Governor Kweke and uh, distinguished colleagues and uh, mayors, um, I'm very happy to be back uh, this year with you. So just to be brief, uh, as you have uh, introduced us, Serbia's newest ranking on the relevant monitoring uh, platforms that uh, for the global situation on uh, political rights and presentation of women is still relatively high, uh, not only on the 23rd position of the Global Gender Gap Index, but also 34th position on the Interparliamentary Global Ranking. Um, so this is one of the results of uh, the affirmative action in gender equality that we have been applying through a set of laws, policies, guidelines, and practices. And one of uh, them is uh, the legally mandated uh, women candidate quota of 40% on the electoral lists uh, for the parliament and on local level. And following the overall elections uh, this April, Serbia has maintained, I would uh, like to report, a strong representation of women in the parliament with 38.6% out of 150 MPs, while the, on the local level it showed a slower increase and according to the new analysis the introduction of the legislated quota in 2021 uh, influenced the steady increase of four percent of women in local assemblies and seven percent on the position of presidents of municipalities and mayors which now are present with 15.9 percent in 145 local governments and uh, this year, um, in the elections that took only place in 14 municipalities due to the different election, election cycles, led to 14.29 uh, women to be uh, chosen as mayors and 21.4 women to be heads of local assemblies, which combined is uh, creating around 36 point, uh, 36%. But, <clears throat> so we see that the quota for uh, candidates produce equality of results, not just equality of opportunity. But still, I warn, they do not automatically lead to the election of more women, nor solve the problem of female representation. So I would just like to add that uh, for the election process, there has to be a mechanism in place to maintain the necessary pressure, support and monitoring, and to address cultural uh, social and economic barriers that prevent women from standing for or being elected to parliament or at the local level. Uh, so we need also their long-term strategies with a systematic and bottom-up approach uh, in promotion of women participation by political parties, education system, NGOs, and trade union. And to conclude, as we see in case of Serbia, the effective measures do need time. Thank you. Thank you very much. So systematic and bottom-up approach you mentioned. Thank you very much for that. I'd like to now go to Ambassador Apalu from Ghana in Central Africa. You are ranked at 108. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you very much. Let me also thank Vision Network for inviting me to participate in this uh, conference. In Ghana, we don't have a quota system yet, but we recognize that the problems impeding the empowerment of women include uh, competing government priorities and lack of uh, political will, lack of understanding of the gender issues, 
low level of education, poverty, and lack of access to financing by women, as well as the patriarchal nature of our society, whereby leadership is seen as a, a preserve of men. So what have we done so far? Our constitution, first and foremost, first and foremost guarantees uh, equality of women and men. We have also introduced other laws, a domestic violence act, a national gender policy, as well as um, adhering to international policies and development goals, such as the UN conventions and development goals, the sustainable development goals. And specifically, the government has introduced a gender ministry since 20, 2001 to drive the gender agenda, uh, the empowerment agenda, uh, agenda responsive budgeting in the areas of education, health, and agriculture. We have introduced um, free education from kindergarten to senior high so that girls can have access, equal access to education as, uh, as well as boys. We have introduced a national health insurance scheme which is guaranteeing free uh, health care for women, especially in the antenatal and other pregnancy-related fields. In the workplace, we realize there are barriers that uh, uh, prevent women from being able to work. So we are introducing aggressive measures to make the workplace friendly, including maternity leave, uh, policies against sexual abuse, favorable conditions for uh, nursing mothers, uh, private and public day care centers, and after school activities, reliable uh, school bus services, so that mothers can go to work and have the peace of mind uh, to concentrate on their work. With all these measures, we realize that more and highly educated women are entering the workforce. So we anticipate that in the next decade, women will be uh, more at the management level. Currently, we rank 108, but if you look at just 2021, uh, uh, last year, we were ranked at 117. So within one year, these measures have helped us to jump nine places to come to 108. Thank you very much. So you are making a lot of efforts, and I could feel that from your presentation. So last year, you were lower than Japan, or 117th, but now it's up to 108. I see. So next, from Central America, we have uh, the Ambassador of Nicaragua, uh, Ambassador Davila. The Nicaragua is the size of Hokkaido and Kyushu put together, 6.62 million people. So surprisingly, Nicaragua is number seven, and actually up from 12th last year. So maybe Ambassador Davila has contributed to this. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me uh, to this network of conference. Um, the government of Nicaragua uh, recognizes women for their essential and strategic work for sustainable uh, development, promoting their protagonism and empowerment. Therefore, since uh, 2007, the Sandinista government, in correspondence with the reality and condition of the country, uh, has supported social justice with gender equity through the elaboration, approval, and application of a legal and normative fr framework that guarantees uh, women's human rights based on its constitution and its national plan to fight poverty and for human development, 2022-2026. Uh, Some of those uh, transformative laws to increase women's participation in decision-making positions are the, uh, the, uh, the law of equal rights and opportunities and the electoral law. Also, Nicaragua is constantly developing programs, plans, and projects to motivate entrepreneurship and economic autonomy of women. Among these, we have fewer hunger, love for the chi little children, healthy jar, and crystal programs. 
In addition of these programs and as part of future actions, recently have been uh, implemented a gender handbook in order to increase respect for women's lives and promote their protagonism at the political and economic level. Likewise, next year, more than 56% of the general budget of the Republic will be for social spending with a gender perspective, especially in education and healthcare sector. Sorry. In conclusion, as you, you said before, all the significant efforts that Nicaragua has made to grow women's economic and political participation have allowed the country to take the seventh place of the top 10 in the gender gap index of the World Economic Forum 2022, obtaining an 81% reduction in inequality between men and women, and far exceeding the 90 position that the country had in 2007. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now that you are at number seven, which is very surprising, but at the same time, I can see that this was the fruit of all of your efforts. Now let's talk about the situation in Japan and the initiatives that have been ongoing at the Japanese local governments. First, from Nasu Karasuyama City, Mayor Junko Kawamata, with a population of around 25,000, at your city, you have started a next generation development and support plan for female participation. I believe this is called Nakama Plan, which has been established this year. And after printing out the entire plan, I saw that it is 21 pages total. But if you can speak to this initiative, please. Thank you very much for your introduction. My name is Junko Kawamata from Tochigi Prefecture, Nasu Karasuyama City. The name is Nakama Plan, but we do not have the details laid out yet. And we have started out with exchanging opinions and to make an effort in increasing the number of local assembly members. And at the council and assembly meetings, ever since I have become mayor, we have seen an increase in female participants, but so that we can increase the rights and empowerment of uh, women through many meetings and assemblies and to provide them with more opportunities for them to become active. We are still working on this. There are many challenges that we are working on in terms of child rearing and parenting. We see these challenges close to our heart at these meetings. Therefore, we would like to make sure to incorporate the opinions of the female participants and to make sure that we have a work-life balance in place as well. And we are are uh, working on an accreditation system as well. And for next year, uh, the city of Nikko, because this is a venue for the G30 and actually for the women's active participation in society uh, promotional activities, uh, Toshigi Prefecture is on fire right now in terms of these involvements. Thank you very much. You alluded to your uh, senior uh, comrade, which is Hiroko Mase, Mayor Mase. And at the Nogi town of Tochigi Prefecture, uh, the catchphrase is a small but bright town. And you respect Mother Teresa. And you also have a local column called Hiro Column with a locally friendly perspective. And you're like the mother of Nogi town. Can you explain your initiatives? Yes. And I was born in Nasukarasiyama city, and perhaps because of that as well. But to set that aside, we talked about the G7, the uh, gender uh, equal participation, and also uh, the women's participation minister next year's involvement at uh, the city of Nikko, and that place being the venue for uh, the meetings. And as Mayor Kawamata mentioned, because the promotion and advertisement is crucial, I hope that all of you here will, in terms of participation of uh, equal 
uh, gender opportunities. And it is uh, next year, June in 2023. I hope that you will uh, place this in the corners of your mind as we, we actively work to make advancements. And I come from a small town of 2,500 or so, but still we are a bright town. And this goes back to the active participation of women. And together with the assembly members, about 30% of them, I have been calling out to the female active, active participation. It's only about two or so right now, but I am active in this. And within the civilians, we all work on volunteer activities as well as NPO activities, and everything is autonomous, autonomous efforts to build this town to create bigger impact, and we incorporate women's perspectives with familiar challenges to heart in feeding back our opinions to the local uh, government and political grounds. And we hope that this will provide a supporting platform for the female politicians here and in building this small but proud time. I'm not saying that this is because we are women, but to at least bring it to a flat and common ground so that everybody can be active and can really bring their competencies and strengths to the table. Therefore, not just through Vision Network, but to utilize the whole network of Japan and the female leaders here to support our town and the entire nation. Thank you very much. I now feel like I want to relocate to Nogi Town because of the warmth that she exudes. Now, next, moving on to Mayor Makiko Ikeda from Koti Prefecture, Ino Town. She has been mayor since six years ago, and she often mentions that we need to do what we can, one set at a time. And at the Ino Town, it seems like female um, executives in the management field has exceeded 30 percent. Hello, everybody. My name is Ikeda. And in realizing society where women shine, we have been actively hiring female executives in the industries. And because of that, we are seeing this going over 30 percent. But because of early retirement of, of these women, it is now dropped to about 30, 20 percent. We are still working on further improvements to increase the number once again. And to develop the talent, we need to work on continuous involvement with them from a very early age. For example, per discussion themes, we work on identifying challenges within the first three years of them being employed at the company or the organization and to make sure that those opinions are incorporated in throughout the entire organization. And for the mid-career uh, people, them being participating in seminars as well as not just the workers, but in their own departments so that they can be actively participating in other departments as well, regardless of their department or gender. We are working hard to uh, build a platform and workplace so that all the females can be actively working. And also in terms of uh, benefits, we are trying to improve this aspect as well. And maternity leaves for uh, male workers, this has been advancing too, so that everybody can participate in parenting so that it doesn't become a one-sided operation for raising a child. 
And by promoting uh, paid leave uh, for maternity and parenting, this does take time for everything to bear fruit, but making steps one at a time will for sure lead to the en enablement of a society where both male and female are actively working together. Thank you very much. That was wonderful to hear. And the Equal Employment Opportunity Law goes back to many, many years ago. To the mayor, Mayor Kaumata, who is the same age as myself, and having these two young people in front of me, uh, not just from the same generation, but I'd like to ask these two younger female leaders too. I'm not judging by age, obviously, but to incorporate fresh ideas. Now, first to uh, Mayor Kishimoto from Suginami Ward. I believe that you won on fields battlegrounds in the election without any posters, and this made the headlines. And in Tokyo, you have Governor Koike, who is a strong ally, ally but I believe most ward mayors are a male uh, leaders in their 70s. But ever since being inaugurated in the summer, how do you feel about being mayor? Yes, thank you very much. My name is Satoko Kishimoto from Suginomi Ward. And as you mentioned, it's been years since the e, Suginami Ward started its political activities. And for me to be in the mix of election and the first female one, I believe that I was supported by many uh, female and women leaders. And in Suginami Ward, it is a ward where locally it's very active among civilians and the residents, but we've had uh, many active fields in commerce as well as elementary school and middle school and protecting the lunch system there and the public uh, systems as well as uh, establishing uh, halls and venues for children and the women always being at the front, uh, forefront of these activities and the workers at the ward uh, supporting all of these involvements. I believe that we are rich in this history and therefore recently within the local community, uh, obviously there have been positive impacts from the community itself, but female uh, women, they have always been very active, very bright, but in the area of politics and government, when it comes to final decision making, there are not enough women in this field. Therefore, politics becoming a mirror reflection of the women in society. With this in mind, I am committed to being more active and involved. And without doing so, new challenges that we need to tackle, as well as historical challenges, and priority within the politics and government, uh, everything will not be as we wish for in the priority making unless the decision making level changes. Thank you very much. So next, uh, Mayor Naito from Tokushima City. And you are from a very large city with over 200,000 people in population. And maybe you have been in a way on a wave of female leaders uh, being part of Tokushima. But I have heard that there are a lot of active female participants, and it's the number one prefecture with the most female entrepreneurs and leaders of companies. But uh, your very younger self, I'd like to ask from you. Thank you very much. I'm 38 right now, and when I was 36, I became mayor. Before that, I was in the council uh, for the prefecture and the city for about 10 years. Therefore, I understand the importance of being active in these bodies, for example, maybe even urban planning or awa odori, the local dancing festivals, or having younger people and female participants in the uh, council resolution bodies uh, for these local activities. And right now, 
it has improved to 36.4 percent in women uh, participation and the younger generation. And since the start of uh, Tokushima City in uh, disaster prevention and recovery, we have heads of departments uh, as female leaders. And in working on employment of these female leaders, and the intent to do so, to have women at the forefront of the decision-making process. And I'm also a mother of a child of 11. Therefore, working with other mothers as well, I often hear of the opinions from mothers and for these people to come into council meetings and uh, public bodies, as well as regardless of gender, even uh, company leaders as well, so that they can work on uh, business continuity and succession, and also supporting uh, women through their parenting years, not just from the industry, but from the local government. So both between uh, politics, administration, and so that we can all work together in creating a better society for all. Thank you very much. I do feel that Japanese women are doing their very best. Okay, so the Madam Ambassadors, you are now in Japan and you are at the very high status. So for all of you in each uh, country, are you a very special person or special woman in your each country? Would you say that? Thank you. Uh, you mean that we are, are we the special people or do we have a special women? I mean, um, <coughs> we are, I don't think that we are special, we are just uh, a showcase of the policies that we have in our country. Um, so I would say that um, we should be also serving as a model in Japan to show how other countries are doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, uh, Ghana instituted some measures which is creating more uh, leadership in the area of uh, empowerment of women. Uh, more educated women are entering the workforce. So in my ministry, for example, there is almost parity between men and women uh, who are working in the ministry now, at least from my level. So the number of ambassadors who have been appointed uh, uh, across the world, we are almost at par, half women, half men. So I am not a special uh, case. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I think uh, for in Nicaragua, women are very special because uh, uh, for uh, the government, it's very important uh, the participation of women in all these sectors in all area. So that's why uh, I told you before about the, the the law of equal rights and opportunities because we have uh, the participation in, ma in many spaces in, in my country. So. Uh, for example, right, right now we have in the executive, uh, mm, se um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the other word. Uh, we have the particip uh, 50, 50 and 50, the participation of, uh, of women and, and men in the political sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this is the reason why I ask you the question, because I expected those answers from you. It's not that we're privileged. It's really due to the efforts that we have been working on step by step and the country as well acknowledging the efforts and for your competencies and what you have done. Now, in talking to what can women in this country do for the future, which is the main topic for today, I asked each of you to write on your flipboards. So if you can raise your flipboards in mentioning what you wrote, what do future strategies for the next generation led by women require? If you can announce and show us your keywords on your flipboards, please. Can you raise your flipboards up? Thank you very much. 
Can everybody see? I'm sorry, I have poor eyesight. Now, starting from Ambassador Davila. What did you write? Uh, increase awareness. Ah, increase awareness. Awareness, yes. Uh, because, I, uh, well, I, I believe that it is necessary uh, to increase awareness uh, in society uh, through campaigns, uh, but also to, it's important to promote uh, the implementation of new laws with uh, gender equity uh, as a state policy uh, that permit uh, the participation of women in, in decision-making positions. So for me, it's very important to, to increase uh, the, the awareness in every sector of the society. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now moving on to uh, Ambassador Apollo. Mm -hmm. Understanding. Y yes, uh, because in Japan, for instance, um, you have a highly literate uh, population, uh, highly educated women. So if they are not in the workplace, then it is important to understand why, because that is what we did in Ghana to realize the difficulties that uh, women have in going to the workplace and trying to put in measures to support women so that we can be able to go to work. So it is important at the government level to understand why women are not in the workplace or resigning at early age so that we can support them. It is, impos uh, it is important in our societies that we understand the gender issues and the importance of women who constitute half the population of the world to be at the workplace on and around the decision-making table so that we can bring our diversity and our knowledge on board. So at the family level, families have to understand why women have to go to work and provide them with the necessary support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Ambassador Kovac. Thank you. Um, well, this is, uh, as I said uh, in my presentation, it's an um, effective measure. Uh, it's a proven measure that uh, if you put something uh, in law, it definitely has an effect. Uh, it might not have an immediate effect, but I think it's important, and we've heard from the keynote speakers as well, that some have been in place for a long time, and it took time, but it took uh, exactly to the goal where they wanted to have, and that is 50-50 presentation in the, I mean, political representation on women. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now moving on to the online members from Karasu, uh, Yama, Nasukara Sayama uh, City. So Mayor Kawamata, what have you wrote down? So women supporting women, like uh, somebody was saying, 50% is women. So I do believe that we are a strong force. And I was supported by other women in becoming mayor. And now it is my turn to return the favor and to contribute to society. That will be all from myself. Thank you. And now, Mayor Ikeda. I'm sorry, I'm not able to see clearly. You wrote down innovation. Eno comes from her town, Eno town. So it's a play on words, innovation. Innovation for Eno town. Recently, I have felt that there is a shift in conscious awareness and behavior among the younger workers in the city, and I believe this really comes from the awareness that it's important to be in decision making and the process of decision making to really make a difference. So this is the reason why I have put this down. 
And next, uh, from Mayor Masse, female perspectives. Uh, building a town where female perspectives are uh, utilized at their maximum. Work-life balance as well as work style reform. Female perspectives are important and crucial to all of these areas. And building a, a local community that is bright and warm and friendly for all, female perspectives are critical for this. And therefore, I always return back to this standpoint in coming up with new uh, reforms. So Kishimoto-san, what about you? Well, actually, I re have, we have just rewritten what I wrote because the question is very difficult. The women's empowerment, uh, how can we change the shape of the, uh, the country? So here I said the empower to uh, make uh, the women working in the local community and the local offices more cheerful and energetic. What we need is power. So in order to, well, in addition to winning the power, we need to gain power, and we have to work together with the other women, and we have to be more powerful. So women supporting women, yes, is important. So uh, in power and to have a power, I would like to change uh, the, the legislature like that. Yes, I wrote uh, a step, one step forward. Um, I'm sure that you have uh, various activities and others, but uh, when I think about myself, um, well, some women think that it's too early, too early to be promoted and so forth, and they say nay to the no to the opportunity. So I would like to encourage them to take just one step forward. Right. So I think that um, you have the longest uh, future uh, to go, and uh, I have uh, high expectations from you. So we are running out of time, and uh, it's an extra question that I'd like to ask you. So the most experienced uh, uh, the mayor, uh, Ms. Mase, or Mayor Mase, uh, since we have young people here, do you have uh, any messages to support those young um, people in uh, politics. Well, gender gap, the position of Japan, I was so shocked to find that out. So under those circumstances, you have become the chiefs of the local governments, and uh, you are all very promising uh, leaders. So I hope that uh, you would believe in yourselves and take one step forward and, of course, make innovation so everything included, I hope that uh, you will continue to move forward. So try to encourage yourself and to continue. And the continuation will give you a uh, power. So uh, without the continuation, I think you, if you end your political life uh, uh, in the short term, you would be faced with a lot of loss. So I think my political life is pr probably too long, but I have a very high expectations from you young people. So I'd like to really send uh, the strongest uh, supporting voice to the young leaders. Okay, thank you very much. Now, it was a very short uh, time that we had, but uh, everyone who participated, and also those of you who are listening uh, online, probably I shouldn't use the word comrades, uh, but um, I think that uh, we are the fellow friends and also the companion, because we are all trying to head toward somewhere high. So we are also buddies, and we are also friends. So I myself were kind of um, overwhelmed with all the power that I could feel from you. I am in a different um, <coughs> arena, but I could feel that the uh, future of Japan is bright with all the leadership that you have shown us. So thank you very much. 
uh, those women, I'm sure, will support our future. And also, those of you who are listening via YouTube, uh, we'd like to bring all the wisdom of women together so that uh, we can make Japan better in the next generation. So once again, thank you very much for your participation. So this is the end of the breakout session four. Active participation of women will change the shape of this country. So at the Bijonet, in the main channel, there will be announcement of the declaration and also closing remarks. So if you uh, wish to continue to watch, please change to the main channel. Thank you very much.